Hi guys, as you can see on my desk, I'm not a typical Mac user. I'm a tinker and electronics nerd. I built this i7 G4 cube Hackintosh about 8 years ago. It's still running great, but unfortunately some software is not supported anymore. For example Fusion 360. I'm also using Eagle, Arduino and GitHub. I'm also using the cube for video editing in iMovie and for Lightroom. Lightroom 3 will not be supported anymore, but I can also open the raw data in Apple Photo. In order to solve the software compatibility issues, I ordered the new M1 Mac Mini. In order to have enough ports, I also ordered this dock. This USB-C to mini display port adapter will be used for the 27 inch cinema display. So let's unbox the M1. To be on the safe side for the next years, I ordered the 16GB 2TB model. So let's see what's inside. Tada! Here it is. Nice. It looks as always, not much ports. Let's remove the projection and have a look at the ports. Power connector, Gigabit Ethernet, Thunderbolt 4, HDMI and 2 USB. What else is in this box? Some paperwork and a fancy power cable. Look at this thing. That's already it. But in order to connect all our stuff we need more. This adapter will be used to connect the cinema display to the USB-C slash Thunderbolt 4 port. Just like this. Now let's have a look at the dock. It comes with the same design as the Mac Mini. It will connect to one of the USB-C ports. It comes with SD card slots, 3 USB-3, USB-C and a speak connector. So let's put the Mac on top of it. It doesn't look too bad I think. The design is exactly the same. As I said, it connects with only one cable to the Mac Mini. Let's plug it in. The cinema display will connect here. So it's time to put it over there and replace the cube. The cube has a lot of connectors and a slot in DVD drive. Two USB 2 ports and the power button. Thanks to the dock, the M1 will also have a lot of front connectors. Let's have a look at the cube's bottom side. Wi-Fi, display port, HDMI, 2 gigabit LAN, 4 USB 3 and 2 USB 2. As already mentioned, there is not much going on on the Mac Mini. 2 Thunderbolt 4, Power, Gigabit LAN, 2 USB 3 and HDMI. Now let's have a look inside the i7 Hackintosh. This mechanism is just ingenious. It was a tight fit, back in the time. It's using the stock Apple heatsink and running more or less silent. I will keep this thing for sure. It's something for the museum. Now we are on the M1. It's running really really good. The only real issue I had was uploading the code on my ESP32 sound controller. Fortunately I was able to fix it. But how? Well, this can be found on my GitHub. 
have a look there. So will it upload on the ESP32? It's compiling. On some boards you need to push and hold the boot button. Now it's uploading. Will it work? Done. So what is my conclusion? Was it worth it? I think yes, because it appears to be fully compatible even with emulated Intel software. It's extremely fast. Its power consumption is very very low, so it's running super super cool. However, the Apple memory upgrades are crazy expensive. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates. Bye!